Hello everybody, this is Mr. Pyers and we're going to go over the Humanimal project. Uh, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select the files I think I'm going to use for the project and I'm going to drag them into Photoshop separately. So I'm going to select my human and one of my animals. So there's my tabs. Uh, let's start with the human. Uh, he'll be my background image. So I'm going to select the crop tool and I'm going to drag and cut away what I don't want from the image. So I'm going to get rid of some of the background of the torso and focus more on the face. Click the return key when I'm happy. There we go. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to image, image size, and double check it. I want my resolution to be at least 150, and I want my image size to be somewhere around the 10 by 10 for mine. Um, then I want to make sure the windows of layer and navigator are open. There we go. Navigator tool, remember, uh, helps you move around, zoom in and zoom out on the fly. Um, and uh, the layer palette, just make sure that's unlocked. Now if I switch to my next tab, I'm going to select the lasso tool, and I'm going to cut, cut out um, what I want to use from the lion's face. I'm going to cut around the face. I'm not going to use the ears, so I'm going to cut around them a little bit there. And when I get my selection done, I'll select the edit option on the top of the toolbar and select copy. Okay, at this point, I'll go back to the human, edit, paste, and I pasted the image. There we go. Now, if you look at the layers palette, uh, I can rename my layers. So instead of layer one and zero, I'm going to do one lion, one uh, human, and I can move them below or above each other and switch what's overlapping what. And I can click, uh, cl select the eye icons to, to close or open an image. Uh, when I select the move key, um, a box appears around. If I hold the shift key down when I pull the corner, I can expand or contract the image. I'm putting it over the face, trying to match it up. It's kind of hard to see all that when it's so opaque. So I can bring my opacity down to see both images at the same time. And if I need to tilt the image of my line, I can go hover over the corner and a curved icon pops up and I can tilt it. Um, I can do some enhancements with my uh, box right there, but I might need to use the warp tool. So if I go to edit, transform, I can select warp. And here's where I can do my fine tuning, like matching up my eyes, the mouth, the nose. Uh, the features of the lion and the human can line up pretty well, actually, compared to some other animals. Uh, so uh, this picture for me looks like it's going to work pretty well. If at this point I was finding that I was like kind of using the warp tool and things weren't working out very well, I'd switch to a different animal. Or maybe I'd just use the eyes of the lion and then maybe use the features of another animal for like maybe the other parts of the face. Uh, but for this demo, it uh, looks like this is working out pretty well. And this is where you really have to uh, be finicky and um, might take you longer than somebody else to kind of play around with this, uh, see if it works. This is why we practice and give, uh, give it a shot. I want to stretch the lion's uh, forehead out as much as possible. So if I want to travel up all the way to the forehead of the man, it'll work. Well, there we go. That looks pretty good to me. Uh, bring the opacity up so I can see the whole image. There we go. Um, next thing I'm going to do is I want to stay on the lion um, and I'm going to create a layer mask. So I'm going to click on the lion. There's the layer mask option. Click it and the white box pops up. Select that. And then I'm going to select the brush tool. And if I click up here, I want to make sure my brush size I can fix on the fly, but I want my hardness to be down at zero and make sure it's a soft brush tool like that. There we go. Okay. Um, I'll show you the bracket keys. If there is a shortcut on your keyboard, if you use the left bracket, it makes the brush smaller. The right bracket makes it larger. Now, What we're going to do is if I select this box right here, if I select white, white means I add more of the, the image of the lion in, and black means I subtract more. So right now, every time I click, I'm subtracting 100% of the lion image. And if I select the white, I'm adding 100%. But if I go to where it says um, opacity, if I bring the numbers down, every time I click, if I have it like at 20%, it's only taking 20% of the image away. It helps me soften in edges and take only a little away at a time. Um, you're going to play around with the opacity you want, 
Um, but I usually say keep it at around 20%. You can really control it well. And again, I'm looking at lining up the features. You're going to constantly be doing that. You're going to constantly be switching when you're on your brush to erasing away or to adding things back. The nice thing about having this layer mask and the brush tool, when you erase something, you can get it back. Uh, sometimes I want to fit an image on the screen, so that's what I just did. But I can use the Navigator tool to zoom in and zoom out. These are the key things you're going to be using. Um, if my brush is really big, it, can, it affects a whole lot of area of the face. So like this is fine for what I'm doing right here to kind of like take care of large areas of blending. But if I need to kind of go to a, a tighter space, I've got to make sure I use my br uh, smaller brush. And again, you're using the bracket keys as your shortcut to make the brush smaller and larger. Constantly changing the opacity to take a little bit more away in big areas and or just a subtle amount on every click. Um, this is, uh, there we go, bringing the brush down, um, just doing subtle transitions. I just noticed I got a lot of it, see his eyebrow? It's really coming out, I don't like that. So I'm gonna add a little bit more of the lion fur over that and it's softening the edges out and covering that up. I'm gonna constantly be doing that throughout this um, as I fine tune things. I'm going to over add something, like maybe too much of the, the human nose will be in there, and then I'll come back and subtract it away and put more of the lion's nose in. You're gonna do it and balance it the way you want, especially how convincing you want it to look. I'm adding the laugh lines of the of the of the celebrity now by erasing away the lion's features. Zooming in really close, just checking some areas, see how things line up. If I have to go back to the warp tool to adjust the shape of um, the animal, I can. So transform warp. I gotta see like, do I need to move the nose up a little bit? I can do these things on the fly, which is really nice. So if it was too low and I have to lift it a little bit, I can do it anytime I want. When I'm happy, I just hit the return key and then I can continue blending. Again, I've always, I always have the layer mask on the lion layer selected because again, whatever I do there, I can constantly add and erase and not destroy the image. It's a great way to like not worry about losing anything. And again, the smaller brush you use, the smaller area it affects. The larger brush you use, the larger area it affects. Bringing in the, looking into the chin area here. And here I'm going to run into an issue. When I cut out the image of the lion, there's a really harsh bottom to that photograph. So if I leave it like that, man, that's not going to look good. It's going to look really cheesy. So I'm going to bring my opacity down really low. And I'm going to subtly take away the line, that bottom edge of the lion photo. And you're going to see a really nice soft blend start to happen. We're going to eliminate that edge line. Now it looks like the fur is blending back into the skin of the chin of the figure. And if I back up, man, does that look a lot better than it did 10, 20 seconds ago. Uh, now onto the eyes. I thought I, I think I lined them up pretty good, but let's see. I'm going to erase the lion, and we'll see the human eyes come out of this. You might want to have your animal eyes stand out and the human eyes not. I'm doing the opposite here. Just kind of erasing away, seeing how those feed together. So now we have the human eyes kind of pulling through there. And if I ever want to see like what the man's face looks like without the lion features, I can go to my layers and click the eye icon to the left of the layer, and I can click off the lion's face and just see the human face, and vice versa. Okay, at this point, um, I'm just going to constantly be going using the warp tool to adjust things. I'm going to be using the brush tool and the layer mask to add, subtract um, textures from the human and the, and the animal um, until I'm really happy with it. See, I'm just double checking 
seeing how the features match up. And I think having more of his forehead come through there will have a better blend um, in the end. So uh, just pay attention to just some of the subtle different things I do. I might work into an area three or four times and go back to it. And that's because, well, being an artist, you're, you're not, if you're not satisfied with something, you want to adjust it until it, it works for you. So you might have some frustrations, and that's totally normal. It's because you want it to look good. I'm particularly like looking at how the curve of the animal's mouth can match up with the laugh line of the human figure. And how like the nose can blend in well. Because I think if I do that right, you're, I'm going to get a really uh, interesting look. Now here I'm like erasing away and getting more of the lion's eye up. But I think that's a really harsh edge. So I'm just going to soften and bring more of the human features back there. I think it might flow better. Some animals will flow really well. And other ones you'll really have to kind of work at, work at it to really make the features look believable. Again, using the warp tool. Constantly trying to adjust that nose. It's something that, in the eyes, something that, like, you know, needs a little work. When I make an adjustment, I might need to come back in an area I thought I was finished with and readjust because if I moved one thing, it could have affected something else, and that's okay. I'm trying to soften the transition here. And again, when I use the, um, when I change the opacity on the brush tool, I like to have it low usually because then I can make subtle, subtle effect of uh, uh, changes, um, not drastic changes. Okay, a little touch-ups there, fine-tuning. So at this point, I thought I was done. I really did. Like, I'm thinking, okay, that's good. Then I look back at this. I'm like, wait a minute. Something's up with the eyes. They're bothering me. So you've got to take a, a second look at your work. Because you could have missed something because you were just so excited or you were so in the zone and you didn't like stop to smell the roses. So when I looked at the eyes again, I noticed that the, line, the outer edge of the eyes of the lion eye was kind of hooking up a lot and the human eye was dropping down. They were both there at the same time. So I'm going to go use my warp tool again and I'm going to try to bend down that upper eyelid on both sides to kind of match up the human eye with the lion's eye it's to, to create a more relaxed, more, as natural as I could possibly could result. And it might be a one minute change, but like it might take one minute to do an adjustment and it could mean a lot. And this meant a lot for me in terms of like, how I felt about the, my work of art. So those are the tools you use, okay? Um, you know, review them, practice them, get comfortable with them because they're going to be used all over the place in this illustration. So um, if you have any questions, all you got to do is ask, right? Best of luck, everybody. Have some fun. Try a few different versions, and if something doesn't work, no worries.